I maxed my Iron Man account back in November of 2022 and I learned a lot of things along the 6 year journey that it took. Today I'm going to be going over every single skill, teaching you guys tips and tricks on how I personally max my account and then different ways that I would do so now. Buckle up because this is going to be a long one. Now the first thing I want to start off by saying is that you should take things slow and honestly enjoy the ride, take in everything, learn as much as you possibly can about all aspects of the game, locations, how to do the different boss mechanics, different setups that you can use, take it very slow and try and learn as much as you possibly can. Playing an Iron Man account is actually very different. You need to know pretty much everything about the game, right? You, you need to know how to make a certain potion. You can't just go ahead and buy it off of the Grand Exchange. You need to know level requirements, right? Because you need to actually get the level to unlock a bunch of different types of content in the game. So it is a very slow learning process, but you it's just so enjoyable. When you first start your account, I highly recommend you just knock out as many quests as you possibly can. Now knocking out quests is a very good thing to do because you unlock so many different cool items and perks, you get different areas, different slayer creatures in order to kill, and you also unlock different skills such as herb lore. Before you get any 99, go for the quest cape. It will make you have a very well-rounded account. You will learn so much about the game, different boss mechanics, even sending a couple of different raids, and it will just give you so much RuneScape knowledge and have everything unlocked for you. I know questing isn't everyone's favorite thing to do, but it is so beneficial and you also get so much experience for quest rewards that you can use on skills such as herb lore or even something like agility or rune crafting. Plus you get some crazy cool areas such as Canifis or Priftness which can really help you with skilling and even PVM in the future. So start off by just enjoying the game, doing as much as you possibly can, and knocking out as many quests as possible. And don't rush quests either, don't do like 15 in a day. Set yourself like one or two a day, and then slowly get the quest cape over time. Alright, so now we're going to go through each and every skill, and I'll tell you how I maxed and how I would do it differently now. So for all of the combats, attack, strength, defense, HP, range, and magic, I just recommend that you do Slayer. Do as much Slayer as possible. Slayer will get you so many cool drops like seeds, alkables, runes, just tons of different equipment and useful things for your account. You will be surprised with even just some low level slayer creatures on what they drop, right? And you realize that there's a purpose for them in the game and that they actually help. Even just things like such as banshees at very low levels will give you pure essence which you can use for rune crafting. I tried to stay away from things like the Nightmare Zone or AFKing Rock Crabs or Sand Crabs. I tried to do as much Slayer as I possibly could for all of my combat styles. Um, like with Magic, right, you can do Burst Tasks. With Range, you can do Boss Tasks. And all the melees, you can just do the nice AFK Slayer Tasks, right? And once you get up to the higher levels of Slayer, you can do some really fun tasks like Cerberus, the Abyssal Sire, and Kraken. The list goes on and on, of course, right? But at the very low levels, do as many tasks as you possibly can. Now me personally, I did Konar for most of my Slayer because I loved getting those brimstone keys for the extra drops. Now for the melee gear, I was sticking with Rune until I was able to get the Fighter Torso and I unlocked the Fighter Torso as early as I possibly could, as well as getting the Slayer Helmet is a very important and essential upgrade for you to unlock. Other than that, you can get the Dragon Defender and that's pretty good for melee, right? For the weapon, I was using the Dragon Scimitar all the way until I was able to get the Abyssal Whip. And then from there, right, the Abyssal Whip, I pretty much used for most of my Slayer until I got the Osmontons fang now for range i was just using the rune crossbow or even the magic short bow to train for most of it you could use red chinchampas if you've done some hunting in the past other than that i highly recommend you camp out zalra and get yourself the uh, blowpipe the blowpipe is amazing it's one of the best range weapons in the game and it will really help you even with some bossing now for my magic training was a lot of high elking and just teleporting around the game. I also completed all of the mage training arena which definitely helped with a lot of the early level uh, magic training. And then once you get to the higher levels you can get arums from barrows and then you can start doing burst tasks which is just crazy fast experience. 
Okay, moving down the list for prayer. Prayer is a very interesting skill and one of the last ones that I maxed. Now, tips for prayer would be to get the bone crusher. It's very good for the low level tasks that you can auto bury the bones. This will help passively with your prayer training. Try and pick up as many ensouled heads as possible so that you can use the spell and get the prayer training that way. Other than that, you're going to get a lot of bones late later in the game from things like the alchemical hydra or a lot of the bosses in the game drop dragon bones. For the early levels of prayer, you can camp, say, blue dragons to get up to, say, 70 prayer. Um, and then from there, you don't really train prayer until you're going for the max cape. But for me personally, I did a ton of Hydra, 2,000 kills to camp enough bones for me to get 99 prayer. And I did this in the wilderness at the Chaos Altar. altar. Now, runecrafting is a very interesting skill because it is very slow to train and you need pure essence in order to train the skill. Now, from your very starting of runecrafting, you're going to need the pure essence. So I highly recommend you just do Slayer, kill some Banshees, and eventually when you camp Zalra, you'll get unlimited pure essence. Another way you can get pure essence is by completing the Sins of the Father quest and mining Dayald essence. Now this is really good for Iron Man accounts because you can actually get essence without having them in your bank and they provide some more experience. But luckily for you, you guys have the Guardians of the Rift, which you can do this minigame all the way until 99. You will get a ton of passive runes. Um, other ways of getting 99 rune crafting is once you get 77 you have access to blood runes which is amazing and level 90 you have access to the soul runes which is your nice afk way of training the skill so i recommend you either do blood soul or do the guardians of the rift all the way to 99. Now the next skill, Construction, is another one that takes a very long time to get to 99 on an Iron Man account. You need to collect all of the planks yourself. Start off by doing the Daddy's Home mini quest and this will give you access to Mahogany Homes, which is pretty much where you complete contracts at people's houses and you get some good construction experience. Now how you get the planks, you can either chop trees and convert them into planks yourself. Personally what I did is I got the Kingdom of Miscellanea over time to collect me say teak or mahogany planks and I used this to actually just make things in my house. I made mythical cape racks all the way to 99. Maybe in this day and age I would do mahogany homes because you know you save a lot more of the planks and you get some good construction experience at the same time and you can unlock a bunch of cool stuff but personally I did the mythical cape racks all the way to 99 and I got all of the planks from the kingdom of miscellanea so construction was one of the last skills that I got to 99. Construction is a very useful skill though, so I would recommend you get it to say 80 so that you can make most of the cool upgrades in your POH as the jewelry box, the occult altar, and we also got the rejuvenation pool, and also the teleport nexus. Very, very useful things that you can make in your house, as well as we've got like the uh, fairy ring and also the tree spirit that you can make in your house. Makes getting around the game very easy, makes healing very easy, makes banking very easy. It's just such a useful skill. So I recommend you push 80 as soon as possible, and then, you know, collect planks over time and then push out the 99. Agility is a skill that you can actually train whenever and max whenever. I personally just did it last. It's just a very very slow skill. Very useful up until say like level 70 or 80 and uh, make sure you get the graceful armor before I guess you get the quest cape because it really helps with your run energy throughout the game um, but agility itself once you get to 80 90 whatever it is it's not as useful so you can wait to max it till the end but it is a very very slow skill so you're gonna have to buckle up and really grind out the skill luckily for you guys you've got the uh, sepulcher which is more engaging way of a training agility a lot of people love it it wasn't personally for me i just like to run the laps and collect the marks of grace but uh yeah it is just a skill that you really have to grind out it maxes out about 50 to 60 thousand experience per hour and it is one hell of a grind to get to 99. There's also the Periftinus course, which you can do, which you can get some nice crystal shards as a reward, but uh, it's almost the exact same experience as, say, the Arty course. 
Now the next skill is Herb Lore, and this takes a very long time to get to 99. I started off by killing Chaos Druids, and I got my first couple thousand herbs this way to train up the skill. Other than that, quest rewards help a ton for training your Herb Lore up to the 50s, 60s, even 70s. Just use the quest rewards to do so. Passively, every single day, do your herb runs. This is the biggest way of collecting herbs. Other than that, Herbivore with Hunter got me a ton probably a couple million experience worth of herbs and then also the kingdom of miscellanea make sure you're doing that every single day topping it up and then eventually over time you will have enough herbs to get 99 herb lore it is a process it'll probably be one of your last skills to max but just take it slow and you will eventually get it one day Okay, so the next skill is thieving. Now there's multiple different ways that you can actually train thieving all the way to 99. The way I personally did it was the pyramid plunder mini game, and I found it to be extremely fun. You basically raid a pyramid. I made a couple guides on it on my channel, so you can feel free to check them out. You raid a pyramid and you will get this thing called the Pharaoh's Scepter, which is amazing to upgrade for your POH. You're going to need that. So do a little bit of the pyramid plunder. Other methods were master farmers. If you want a ton of seeds to farm, can be very useful for herb lore training. Other than that, you can just pickpocket random things around the game. We got pickpocketing elves and vires, which can be some really good experience. And yeah, overall, you can just do a mixture of pickpocketing and also the pyramid plunder, which I personally think the pyramid plunder is the way to go it's just super chill and relaxed okay so for the next skill for 99 crafting it is done with molten glass now how you get tons of molten glass is by planting giant seaweed on fossil island now how you actually get the giant seaweed is by killing lobstrosities and they will drop the seaweed spores which you can go ahead and plant once you've planted them, you can harvest them for giant seaweed. The next ingredient you will need is the buckets of sand. This used to be a really painful process of having to fill up buckets with sand, but now you can go out to the desert and actually mine the sand yourself and put it into the buckets, which makes it super fast to collect sand. Okay, so with the giant seaweed and the buckets of sand, you can use the lunar spell super glass make, and basically this will convert it all into nice molten glass which you can then use to actually gain your crafting experience now you can start with like the unpowered orbs at level 56 crafting this will give 52 experience move up to the lantern lenses at 49 crafting this will give 55 experience and at level 87 crafting you can finally make the empty light orbs which will provide 70 crafting experience and this is personally how i got to 99 crafting Okay, so next would be the fletching skill. Now, there's multiple different ways that you can actually train to 99 fletching. A lot of people do it with just making the broad arrows, which you can do when you actually buy the perk from the Slayer Master. You're going to need to make headless arrows yourself and then obviously add the broad arrow tips to them. This is for the best experience pretty much and the fastest way of getting to 99 fletching. What I personally did is get the Kingdom of Miscellanea to actually collect me a ton of maple logs and I slowly got my way to 99 fletching by making the maple longbow use. Another thing I did is I chopped a ton of the yew trees and the magic trees, even the redwoods, and I used these logs in order to get my fletching up. I also made a ton of GP in the process. Now for my 99 Slayer, I just did it passively over time. Slayer is actually my favorite skill in the game, so it was never a grind training the skill. I mostly did it through Konar and Duradel tasks. Konar was great. Um, I, I literally did Konar all the way to 99, and I just started doing Duradel past 99. Konar drops the Brimstone Keys, which you can use for a bunch of good resource drops, and also just to make a little bit of extra money, as well as the Duradel will give you the fastest and best tasks in the game but slayer is one of those skills you can't really tell someone how to get 99 you just go up to a slayer master get a task and kill x amount of creatures right so just do this do every single task that you possibly can and the ones you really hate or you don't see providing value just block them or skip those tasks right a lot of tasks some people say they never do i end up liking a lot because they either make a lot of money or give some really good resources so you pick the tasks that you want to do and train slayer over time this is a great way obviously to get all of your other combat skills to 99 and learn the ways either using magic magic, range, or melee. 
All right, so the next skill is Hunter. Now, most people start doing Birdhouse runs to train their Hunter skill. Um, I started off by doing the Varrock Museum. This got me all the way from levels 1 to 9 Hunter. And then also, I did a little bit of quests to get my Hunter up a little bit. From there, I did Birdhouse runs pretty much all the way from whatever it was, 20 to 80. From 80 to 99, I did Herbivore. Now, the reason I did this is because it gives very, very good Hunter experience, and it's not super click intensive compared to, say, like, Red Chinchampas. If you do Red Chinchampas, you will get a lot of Chinchampas that you can use for range training or even doing bossing in the future, but it's very click intensive, and that was not for me, so I personally did Herbivores. They are still click intensive, but not as much, and you get a ton of herbs in the process, which I used for my 99 Herb Lore. I really really can't recommend herbivores enough they're super fun relaxed and chill and you make a ton of quote-unquote money or herbs all right so the next skill would be mining now personally i did the motherload mine for most of my mining experience pretty much from when i unlocked the motherload mine all the way up until 99 mining it is a super nice way to afk train your mining other than that, I did a lot of the sandstone mining to get supplies for crafting and a little bit of amethyst when I wanted to severely AFK the game. Amethyst is a way where you can make a ton of money or a ton of amethyst if you're an Iron Man account, which you can use for very good dart tips or arrows later on in the game. I would just recommend you do the motherload mine. You get a good bulk supply of random different ores that you can use for smithing training later on in the game. Super AFK, super enjoyable to do. And yeah, I can't recommend the motherload mine enough. It is slow. It is very, very slow, but you will eventually get 99 mining over your AFK periods. If you want a really fast way to train your mining, you can do the granite in the desert. This is very painful and brutal, and you don't get really much out of it, so it's up to you. Now, for my 99 smithing, I did gold ore from pretty much level 40 to 99. I spent a lot of time and a lot of GP buying gold from the shops. Very painful and brutal process to do. Took a very long time, but I eventually smithed pretty much 140,000 gold ore to get my 99 smithing. My last little bit of levels I did with the Giants Foundry minigame, which you guys can unlock at a lot lower of a level now. And it's basically a minigame where you can get some really good smithing experience and some good rewards as well with using far less materials. So if you're a very low level, I highly recommend you check out the Giants Foundry. You knock out the little quest in required in order to do so. And then you can get some very, very good experience. It is a little click intensive, but it's not the end of the world. It's a lot le less click intensive than doing, say, gold. You can also use all the gold and all the ores that you made with the mother load mine. So it it's a pretty free skill if you do the mother load mine, especially now that we have the Giants Foundry. Also, a ton of the Slayer creatures drop ore, especially gargoyles are very good to get yourself a bulk supply of gold ore. Alright, so for my 99 fishing, it was very interesting and very slow. So for my 99 fishing, I personally did mostly Karambwans. I fished probably a couple hundred thousand Karambwans in my time now on this game. Karambwans are unlocked from the TI1I Trio quest, and they're a very good food source for an Iron Man account and a very good way to actually train your cooking skill. Now, if you want some fast cooking experience, you can do the Barbarian Fishing. Now, Barbarian Fishing is kind of relaxed. You do have to drop the fish here and there, or you could do the three-take method, but uh, you can get some very fast experience there and also train a bit of agility and strength in the process. But what I recommend you guys do is the Tempo Risk minigame or boss. Basically, it is a fishing boss where it is very chill, similar to the Winter Todd minigame where you go ahead and fight the Tempo Risk boss. You get some really good rewards from it. You can get things like the Fish Barrel and the Tackle Box, which can really help your account out. You get some pretty good fishing experience. Not the best in the game, but it is better than something like Carambons or Sharks. Okay, so next is cooking. Now, cooking is a very fast skill, but it is hard to get the supplies on an Iron Man account to train it. So what I pretty much did is fish Karambons, like I've said. This is a very, very fast way, and you can get 99 cooking knocked out in like a few days if you have all of the supplies. 
Other than that, I did, you know, the temple race gave me a ton of raw fish. Even just doing some random PVM can get you raw fish over time. And another secret is you can actually get the Kingdom of Miscellanea to collect you some raw tuna and swordfish, which can help out if you need to push that 99. All right, so 99 fire making was my first 99 and it's obviously I just did it at the Winter Todd mini game. Very, very fast, can be very rewarding. That's pretty much about it. Now for 99 woodcutting, I did it very, very slow and I pretty much chopped yew trees and redwoods all the way to 99. If you want to make it faster, you could do say willows or teaks. And I guess now we also have the woodcutting update. With forestry, you can get a lot more experience per hour by doing the forestry events and it might even get a little bit better when we get the forestry part 2. So you can either do the forestry, you can do the very slow AFK methods, or you can do something like 2-3 uh, ticking teaks. Woodcutting is a very very slow skill so I pretty much did it while I was in college and I AFK'd and I chopped like 20 to 30,000 yew trees and then I also chopped you know another 20 to 30,000 redwoods for my 99. Now for the last skill farming one of my absolute favorite skills in the entire game I just planted pretty much everything that I possibly could, whether it be all the way from an acorn to a redwood tree. Um, the farming guild helps with it a lot, and you also get the farming contracts, which will allow you to get a lot more seeds. I got most of my seeds either through master farmers or PVM drops. Plant everything you can and just try and do as much farming as possible, right? It, farming is another one that does take a very long time on an Iron Man account. If you do want to rush farming, however, you can do the mini game. Now, there's a mini game called Tithe Farm, and basically, what Tithe Farm is is you plant these uh, little crops and then you harvest them pretty much immediately and you can get some really cool rewards you can get the farmer's outfit you can get grape seeds and you can actually plant grapes which can help with cooking and making secondary ingredients for herb lore the uh, tithe farm is very good if you actually want to like you know train farming without it being passive so you can actually spend all your time at the tithe farm and just knock out 99 farming as quickly as you really want to but what I pretty much did is just collect all of the seeds over time, do as many farming contracts as possible, especially the herb runs. The farming XP is very passive and adds up over time. Yeah, so that's pretty much how I went ahead and maxed my Iron Man account. It has gotten a little bit easier with the quality of life updates over time, but you know, it's traditionally the same, right? It's a very slow process. You learn a lot throughout the journey, and I can't recommend Iron Man mode enough, especially if you're burnt out of the game. It really is a refresher, and it's super rewarding to do, and it's a great way to actually learn on how to play the game if you've never done so before. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you can get a couple of tips and tricks out of this video if you are trying to max your account anyways thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you in the next video see ya later